Governor Keene, uh, Vice Chairman Hamilton, thank you for inviting me. I, let me begin by saying how uh, grateful I am that all of you have agreed to serve in this commission. Uh, I know over half of you well from personal previous professional exchanges, and I know you sure as heck didn't need this job. <laughs> but the fact that you were willing to do it on behalf of us, on behalf of the country, address one of the biggest issues that we've got is really a testament to your patriotism. I want to say thank you. I really do. I'm grateful that you're willing to do it. Uh, the, the good news about being able to go third on a panel is that everything's been said. The bad news is that everything's been said. And so I will be very, very brief. Uh, I, I, in my prepared statement, listed the three primary underlying factors that uh, I think are the are causing great limits to our capacity to get actionable intelligence today. As, as Attorney General Barr said, one is the, the great divide that separates foreign intelligence and domestic intelligence. It is, obviously, the bad guys know how to take advantage of that great seam in our constitutional democracy, and that we have to overcome that. Second, as, as Brother McGaffigan said, um, this bias towards towards collection at the expense of analysis. It's plagued us for years, and it's plaguing us now. And I'll say just a, a minute where I think we have a particularly unique problem in the area of homeland security in this regard. But this is also, it's a historic problem. We've always had this problem. And the third are the series of both official and unofficial ground rules that are tying the hands of law enforcement, especially the FBI. I mean, I think a lot of it was put in place through explicit rules. Frankly, it's even larger in the sense of unwritten, culturally understood rules. Don't do X because you're going to get in trouble. It really sub substantially constrains the inventiveness and the imagination of our law enforcement. And so those these cultural dimensions are even bigger problems. So we, we've got to deal with it. Now, I, I think these are the underlying problems. And frankly, since September 11th, I hate to say it, I think we've gotten off on the wrong foot on a lot of this. Um, because we had 19 folks hiding in our midst, planning for a couple of years to attack us, we've gotten off on the mode that we've got to collect just about every bit of information on everybody. And it is just, that's the core of the great growing anxiety Americans are feeling about the loss of their privacy at, as we try legitimately to get our arms around homeland security. There is no solution to this problem other than a much stronger domestic intelligence program, surveillance. But unless that starts with much stronger dimension of protecting privacy in the process, we're going to fail. And we can't afford to fail. We can't afford to fall back on comfortable rules, which is what we did with law enforcement you know, in the 80s and the 90s, to tie their hands so that they wouldn't get innocent people in trouble. We tied their hands so that they couldn't help us find the bad guys. So we've got to address the privacy issues up front. And we make it worse when we start with all the innocents and when we try to work our way in to try to find the guilty. For crying out loud, let's start with the people that we already are suspicious about. We went a full year before we committed ourselves to getting an integrated watch list. And I'll tell you, you talk to people privately who are working on these things in the government, they say it's years away. The energy behind that isn't anywhere as commensurate with its payoff. We ought to start with the problem, the likely problem people, and build our way out rather than start with a vast population of innocent people and work our way in. And we're just off on the wrong foot. And we've, we've got a chance to fix this. Uh, but, but we really do have to change it. And I, I, it just scares Americans to think that before they get on an airplane, there's a computer someplace that's going to give them a red, yellow, or a green color code, you know, before they're allowed to get on it. When instead we ought to be tracking the 70,000 or 80,000 people who we know have ties with problem institutions, and then work our way out from that core. It would be of a lot better chance, frankly, of dealing with the privacy issues if we start that way. And I would argue have much more actionable intelligence in the process. And we're going to have to go out and create actionable intelligence. This was what John and, and I 
argued in our little piece. We, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're looking for the needle in the haystack, but we're spending all our time adding hay to the pile. <laughs> okay, we need to find the needles. And that means we have to kind of create the dots. We got to use our intelligence capabilities to go out and find the problem people, the bad people. And that's going to take covert operations inside this country. And we're very nervous about that. Rightly so. I mean, it's very, you know, this is something that scares people. Most Americans came to this country from their home country because they didn't want to be around a government that spied on them. Okay, so we understand the kind of impediments that we're facing that we want. That's part of our culture. It's what we value. But we're still going to have to overcome that. Now, how do you organize to do that? Well, you know, I mean, uh, and I'll use shorthand, you know, the CIA clearly is competent, but people don't trust it to spy domestically. The FBI w was good at it in the past, but frankly, the last 25 years has shifted it dramatically over to a very much a constrained law enforcement culture. Now, I, I completely agree with, with Attorney General Barr that, that Director Mueller is really working hard to change that. But we're a long ways away. I mean, just, I, I serve on his advisory board. I want him to succeed, and I'll do anything I can to help him succeed. But we are a long ways away from having a transformed culture inside the FBI that would make that happen. And the Department of Homeland Security was, you know, cobbled together with people that don't have an intelligence starting point. So what do you do? I mean, we're all wrestling with this problem. I, we, in our little group, we opted for the view that it ought to stay inside the FBI, but that this, frankly, is a provisional case. I believe we need to start there because I strongly believe any domestic surveillance must be under the supervision of a constitutional officer of the government. I don't believe you can ever convince Americans to trust a system that isn't overseen by the Attorney General. Can the FBI, FBI make that transition? Frankly, we were somewhat divided. As a matter of fact, we were very divided. Um, I think all of us have the hope that it would work. Not all of us had the conviction that it will. And we made a few recommendations that we thought might strengthen the chance that it would. One would be to bring in direct management from the intelligence community that has analytic experience inside the FBI, a freestanding entity inside the FBI, subject to the FBI's and the Attorney General's oversight, but that has management leadership that has strong analytic skills. Now, if that works, then we've got the best of all worlds. If that doesn't work, you at least have the prototypical starting point for a new entity if you need to spin it off and to create it if you don't believe you can grow it inside the FBI. I want it to succeed inside the FBI and inside the Department of Justice. But if it doesn't succeed, you at least have not wasted a couple of years on an experiment that might fail. Again, let me conclude by saying, you know, the only reason I, I may be too narrow, but the only reason to study history is how it informs our view of the future. And that's really what I think you're doing. I think these hearings are just crucial. And the country really is looking to you. So we, I'm grateful that you gave us a chance to come today.